the first of the future. At a unique circuit, 30 riders dropped in and after 13 races, a leading pack emerged. Carlin, player one, Nico Roach Racing. Three teams came out up front. A name with a motor racing pedigree. Super Silky Smooth and Ischetti took to the podium. For Danny Skinner and Nikki Daly, both were cut up at the start and hard done by with crashes. Player one took first and second in the first ever ESC heat race. Chelsea Gowland had her first day cut off during quarterfinal one, whilst Matisse Nehru took maximum points by winning every race he entered. The Prince of London returns home with the crown after taking maximum points. Will the homecoming be met with repeat success? There are plenty of riders with a point to prove coming into the second ever event in the 2022 ESC Championship. It's all happening here at the ESC. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC. Guys, we are back inside our Electric City home and back for some more electric scooter action. Alongside me again is Elliot Jackson, our two-wheeled expert both on and off the track. Elliot, it is damn amazing to have you with us. What is up, Jess? It's so good to be back and I am just about recovered from London, ready to get into the second ever ESC race event. Yes, London. We will get to round two Sion in just a minute, but London was a blast. The first ever ESC event and the first time we saw the S1X in action. You know, to be honest, the first event blew me away. I heard these things were fast, but man, you really don't get a sense of that until you see them race. It was tight, it was technical, and honestly, it was just a breath of fresh air. The races flew by and I couldn't help but to get invested. What we saw in London was not just the birth of a new sport, but also the beginnings of some rivalries in both team and rider competitions. Yeah, I mean, racing is racing regardless of the discipline. And from racing, we get winners. The most interesting part for me coming from London to Sion is not only the competition, but the evolution. If you missed the first race, well, that's on you, but we've got you covered, check it out. We're underway in this first ever e-scooter championship race. And what a start it is for Vinay, who takes the lead and he heads into the light. Quick glance over Whoa. the shoulder and now we're going to see the pass. Oh, and we've got a crash for Vinay. Will there be any kind of team thoughts in this? Here we go, Brooks up the inside, makes it happen. Brooks will head over towards the line. And his first semi-final is underway and Shetty has made a great start for Carlin. The battle at the front is real right now. Can he get round the outside and chop back? Maybe. He's trying this time. He's taking great lines here. Whoa, that was tight in there. Look at Nehru. There it is. They get close. He runs wide. Is he going to hold it? He gets it done. Green lights off. And this first final of ESC is underway. And the first turn. Oh, we've got a fall up. Matisse around the outside, using the boost already. Goes around the outside, wow. They need to let the tires get warm. So Schutz tries to go around the outside. Vernet shuts the door. We're on board with Schutz. Can he find a move here? Coming back, he's, oh, he's off, he's off. Nehru feels it, a glance over his shoulder, and Brooks is hunting. He's using his final four seconds of boost. Is it going to be enough? He's right up the inside, but he's not close enough yet. But I think Nehru has got enough. He heads back inside the print works. Nehru, one more turn, Whoa. and he's done it. He is the first winner of the ESC World Championship. Thank you very much for following ESC. Let's go.
Elliot, London was epic. Talk me through it. I mean, it definitely lived up to the hype. That inside outside track, the ramp start was on point, and we had some close racing and insane overtakes. A new star has emerged in Matisse Nehrud. The King of London is returning home with his crown. Yeah, the Swiss rider has such a unique riding style. I mean, we knew that coming into this that the canvas was relatively blank in terms of technique, but the smooth, wide arcing lines mixed with some serious straight line speed took him to the top step of the podium. We will be diving deeper into technique just in a little bit, but first, Elliot, we're here in Sion, Switzerland, and the circuit could not be more different. Yeah, that's right. At just under 648 meters long, and set around some tight and twisty sections of a downtown city, this track is looking sick. When the ESC said they were going to be moving around to completely unique circuits, they were not wrong. This place is pretty picturesque. Now, let's get down to the track with Marcus Bronzy. Marcus Bronzy again here, see on live on the track, and I'm happy to be joined by one of the rider coaches, Joe Ackroyd, and he's gonna talk me through exactly what is going on and what's different with the track this year, because let's be honest, at this event, instead of London, there's quite a few things that are different, aren't they? Yeah, massive changes, massive changes. Obviously, you know, everything's outdoors here, where before we were, we were running part indoor, part outdoor. So it brings a different dynamic. The other thing is from the starting ramp here, we're running straight into the start finish straight. It's, uh, it's a long run to turn one. Um, the difference from that to, uh, to what we had at, at London is obviously there we were running straight down into a hairpin. Yeah. So this changes the dynamic of a start massively. Um, we're probably going to find that the riders with less weight have a slight advantage because they can get away. Uh, whereas in London, we were finding that it was probably who was prepared to take a bigger risk. Yes. So it's going to change it. It's going to make the racing good. It's certainly going to make Turn 1 interesting. Are you going to say that this will maybe change the dynamic between the riders in terms of how they come off the blocks then? Because it's such a different start to the track. Um, I mean, possibly, possibly. They're limited to what they can do from there. It's a one push rule. So from starting at the top of the ramp, when that light goes green, they can only push once. Okay. So from there on to turn one, it's who wants to use their boost. They've got to manage the boost over the weekend. It's going to be uh, a thinking game as well. So there you have it, a fast start, but also a start in which the riders have to really think about moving forward. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. This may look like a relatively simple track with the amount of straight lines, but these can add a layer of complexity that might not be obvious. We'll get more into that later, but something that is really interesting is where the riders are placing their feet, and therefore, how much weight they can transfer from the front to the back wheel. Keep in mind that the riders can decide how much power goes to the front wheels and the rear wheels. If we take a look here at Matthias in the top left, it's a pretty normal stance. Coming from freestyle scootering, he has his feet pretty evenly balanced up and down the board. Not too much of a surprise here. Anish in the bottom left now, you can see that he has both of his feet planted at the back of the board coming out of the corner. This could, could suggest that he has a lot of his power weighted to the back of the scooter, and that's why he's putting all of his weight there to get maximum traction. Billy Morgan, top right. As he looks back over his shoulder, you can see that his stance is weighted toward the back of the board. He tends to hang his leg out when cornering kind of motocross style, so this is probably what dictates why his feet are side by side. Finally, Killian Lahr, one of the tallest riders in the field. You can see he has his lid right over the handlebars and his foot on the back of the board. It could be that he has equal distribution of power, front and rear, and his long legs allow him to shift his weight without changing his stance. And without further ado, let's get back to Sion and into some racing. Now we wait the green light and we will be racing. We're underway in Switzerland in round two. The yellows are on, there's bumping, there's banging and Rand with a big off in the opening meters of this first race. Goodness me, 
What a moment that was early on in this one. Ponziani leads and Jordan Rand finds herself off at the back. So great drama at the start as we look back again as to exactly what happened. And Maria Mappis comes across and she forces all of the riders to bunch together. The net result was Jordan Rand hit the deck. But Mappis has been penalized two places. So tough fall for Jordan Rand, but Mappis is the one that's penalized and she will fall her final position by two places. Well, let's hear from Jordan Rand. We caught up with her just before the race. For me, I'm always like, attack. Like, I'm telling myself, like, don't be a mouse. Like, go for it. <laughs> be a tiger. Chase him down and hold your ground. Don't back away just because. So I'm usually just trying to tell myself, like, attack, attack, attack. <laughs> Here we go, take two for this opening heat, and we're underway. Clean this time, more space out there on the track, but once again, it's Ponziani who gets low and gets out to the lead. And she's shown already in the team racing yesterday that she is one certainly to watch out for here in Sion. So it's Ponziani with Mapis, Gowland, and then Unjaguna. Gowland is all over the back of Mappis here. Gowland has shown some really good speed throughout as they come through to complete that second lap. And now they're on the third lap of four here in the heats. Gowland tucks in. Undaguna must have had a problem here because he's dropped off the back. Ponziani is going to sweep round here and take the checkered flag. Gowland in second place. Mappis will sweep in in third place. And Unjaguna, well, now finally we see him. We're on that start ramp and we're underway in this second heat. But who will have it? as now they push forward and they start to move with just a little bit of speed into this opening corner. And a really great start from Jess Howden that puts her at the front. And she's the one that leads the way through this opening stage. She's chased hard. Howden is leading. And these two, how hard will they push at this point? That's the question. Oh, no, she's down. Big slide, and Shetty manages to avoid her. But Howden with a small mistake, and she finds herself on the deck. That's going to cost her hugely. She was riding very well up until then. Looked patient, but just overcommitted into that turn. Not enough weight on the tyres, and that was all she rode. She is out after leading the first two laps. Shetty inherits the lead there. Dan Brooks in hot pursuit. We're on board with Dan Brooks right now. Well, here is Shetty in control of this race. Brooks has pretty much wheel tracked him all the way around this street circuit here in Sion. You can just see Amy Hood in the distance, but it's going to be Shetty. Barring a big mistake here, who will swing towards the checkered flag. A little foot off the S1X there as he goes over the line in celebration. A little fist pump up. Didn't quite get the timing right there, did they? <laughs> and there's Shetty. Confirmation then. 352.086 from Shetty. Brooks in second, Hood in third, and Guadardo. Picking up fourth place. Frustration for Jess Howden. Heat three is underway here in Sion. And Lara is low, but he's been burnt here. And on the outside, it's Daly who's going to reach the corner first. Really smooth stuff from the former hockey player. Great start from her to just absolutely rock it down the course. She's followed by Vinay, then it's Bello. Lara, and then at the back, Zagede. 
Bernay looked like he had got the jump, pumping down that start ramp. But Daly was just driving so hard to that first turn. But Vinay has got better track speed from what it can see. Will he be able to make a pass here? Lara just finds himself out the back, but Vinay has made that pass and he now leads the way. And look how quickly he's shot clear. This must be frustrating for Lara, knowing, yes, you will go to the quarterfinals, but you're losing a few championship points here. But you don't want to make a big mistake. You can see he has very good corner speed, but struggles a little bit in the straights. Not used a lot of his boost. Oh, oh and there's a mistake. Big mistake there from what we can see. Huge mistake. Lara goes past. Below goes down. Daly goes down. A shake of the head from the tall, tall Lara. Uh, he can't believe what's quite happened. Vinay is going to take victory, but we're going to discuss more what happened behind him. He's got no idea. Let's let's have another look at this. What happened here? Well, we picked it up quite late there, but it looks like just too early on the throttle there for Daly, uh, causing an issue there, and took both Daly and Below down there. So it's a little bit ahead. Yeah. Loses the back end, gets onto the running man, and then causes even bigger issues for the other riders. As we can see in the riders lounge, what happened there? They can't believe it. <laughs> we just finished our first three heats here in Sion, and they did not disappoint. So many talking points like, like Needle said, and uh, I wanted to take you through a couple of the things that I saw. First one is Jordan Rand taking a fall here in heat number one. You know, it really goes to show how important getting that jump is, right? Getting that front wheel in front of everyone off the start, because if you don't, <laughs> you really don't have any control over what the other riders do. You know, this next one was the crash in heat number two by Jess Howden. You know, we saw this so much in practice, and one of the things I wanted to highlight was really the surface changes here. This is the perfect storm of the difference in weight transfer. And you can see the riders really losing a lot of traction. And one of the things about the EESC is because we go to a different city every single event, the traction profile is different for every single event. So it's a learning process. The riders try to adjust their scooters and really do all of the work they can during practice, which you're seeing here. But you know, once you get into the race, you really never know what's gonna happen and the adrenaline is just flowing. The last thing I wanted to show you was this crash by Nikki Daly. It looks like she saved it and then everyone else kind of a little wild afterward. Um, but you know, they're, they're all good. We actually saw everyone get up and, and continue. You see uh, Bello there running to her scooter and you know, those two go through. But I think it goes to show that everyone here at the ESC is actually really aggressive, really trying to make those points up. But we're only halfway through the first couple of heats, so let's go back down to Sion and take another look. Gashani and Trey White, and we're underway here. And it is that big, long drag down to that first turn. And the question is, who's gonna make it first? And it is Cabrini with Nehru in second place, Morgan in third, White in fourth place, and Gachardi is stuck at the back, and Cabrini was like an absolute lightning bolt off the start. We thought that might be the case. Nehru, winner of the first round in the UK. We know how fast his track speed is, but he couldn't get to the first turn fast enough, so Cabrini leads this out over Nehru. Tight track today. They switch their way through, and it, it, Gashadi just too far away. White has seen off the challenge, it seems. Morgan looks like he's in cruise control. That gap has shortened to him. But it is the leader, Cabrini, that's going to take the line first. First victory for her in ESC. She was so good in London. Followed home by Nehru. Morgan in third, Trey White in fourth, and Gashadi is out. But Cabrini 
deserves all the plaudits because that was an outstanding, outstanding race from her. Well, let's have a look then at confirmation. 340.824 from Sara Kabrinik. Big smiles for her. Second, Nehru Morgan was lurking in third. And Trey White holding off Jam Gashadi to take fourth. Here we go, and down and deep, and away they go, and it's going to be Luna, who's on the left of the screen, who's going to get there first. And he's the one, and it's a Murphy scooter 1-2 with Luna and Salik, who are right at the front. Then it's Letelier, and then it's Kemmer with Christy trailing at the back. Well, this will be good for Salik because he's able to test a few different lines, running a little wider into some turns, seeing if he can come out where he may be later in the day, can force a pass if he absolutely needs it. Some other racers would be battling just to make it to the corners. Well, Salik knows that he's in good position here. He's able to just sort of stalk his teammate as they get through this heat here. It is the final lap here in heat five. Well, we're watching the battle at the front, but at turn nine, Kemmer's come off. And now we see Luna over the line in first. It's Salik in second. Letelier ease through in third. And Elise Christie is going to take fourth place here. So Mark Luna, 345.56, sees him take victory. Followed in by Rumet Salik and Alexis Letelier. Elise Christie also qualifying from fourth place. Lena Kemmer had that unfortunate incident at turn nine that left her out of the race. Espinosa Jimenez have been good in practice, but what are we going to see here? Well, it looks like Skinner has got the jump, and he's absolutely flying. The weight that he lost to prepare for this series really helping him as he's on his way. And it's the white helmet of Carlos Espinosa Jimenez in second place. Shoots is in third place. Looks smooth like from Skinner Jimenez, then. Uh, Jimenez has closed the gap on Skinner. Has Skinner sort of kind of backed off a little bit, knowing that they can play it safe, conserve some of that boost. We all know how important that'll be later in the game. Wow, we see the stakes here. Absolutely, a man down. It's Espinosa. He'll be frustrated. Barely any time for him to get back in the race. Well, we're going to see now as we come in here. He gets the pass there and then goes down. And uh, Kota shoots does really well to avoid him. So Skinner looking back and knowing that they have just got to stay one and two. They'll easily make it the corners, but you don't want to lose your concentration here. With the final two bends coming into the finish here on lap four. Skinner wins it then. Espinosa Jimenez in second place. Yeah. <laughs> there is your winner then, Skinner. Danny Skinner confirmed as victorious in that one. Followed home by Espinosa Jimenez for 27x. Kota shoots for Murphy's was in third. And then Jake O'Neill profiting on that mistake from Javi Espinosa. No matter where it leads, I I'm in control. Destination guaranteed. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC. Red light is on. Shetty, Gowland, and Hood, Mappis, Daly, and White. Who's going to make it first? It's Daly. Oh, big twitch there from Mappis. And Hood did really well to stay on. What an opening start to this. And Shetty finds himself shoved a little further back. But once again, Daly has got the drop. And it's she who leads here from Gowland. White, Shetty, Mappis, and Hood. With the track being backed up, all behind Daly, keeping everybody together. Yeah, look how far Garland is ahead already. She is making good work of this heat. And Shetty, he needs to get going here, but it's so tough to pass. We can see that he has some of the fastest track speed. Oh, and up the inside. No, door is shut again. Trey White, Trey White. almost gets through, but he's made a mistake. Disappointed, Mappis. you can see. Shake of the head.
Trey White, can he make it through? Mappis on the inside! How much space is there? Mappis is trying to fit that small... Oh, and Amy Hood goes down, pushing way too hard on this... Going into this final lap. Daly leading Shetty. up Mappis over White in that second, uh, third, fourth and fifth position. Over the line comes Gowland, untroubled. Brilliant ride from her. Shetty also through. We can see Amy Hood walking on. She's OK, but the race to the line is here. And brilliant from Daly. Chelsea Gowland looking really good for player one. 450.172, followed in by Shetty and Daly for Carlin. Trey White misses out, as does Murray Bola Mappis, who finishes in fifth. And Amy Hood with that hard, hard crash. Let's hear now from one of the racers that just finished second, Anish Shetty. I'm Anish Shetty, and I'm into motorsports, and uh, I also do CrossFit. I was born and brought up in a city called Hubli and uh, I currently live in Bangalore. In motorsport, I started back when I was around 15 years of age. For me to convince my family and my people around that okay, motorsport is something I want to do in my life, it was a little difficult. But then, uh, you know, after a couple of years, they understood okay, the sport is real. And then on, it's been a great journey with the support of family and my friends. In my uh, motorsport career, biggest achievement I would say is in one single year I won 200 to 300cc uh, national championship in the circuit racing, cross country desert storm rally and uh, one of the events called the Dirt Extreme which was a motocross event. I would say ESC is the future. It's a championship where uh, athletes are coming from different sporting background. Now that everything is coming with electric, the scooter being more accessible, the tracks being more accessible, this will be a championship which a lot of people will be looking forward to. Coming from India, I would say accessibility is thing which stops us from competing into motorsports. So this is something which can make it more easier and also pocket friendly. I love speed, I also love winning, so I thought, okay, might as well give it a try. The red light is on, and we're away here in the second quarter final. And look at this, look how close they are. But a great start to set things going here from Brooks. Ponziani's just behind him, and then it's Undergun, Jake 100, Christie, and then at the back it's Guadalho. We're on board with Undergun. And he has this in front of him. This is the battle for first. Oh, a mistake there from Ponziani. And Undergun is through. And Ponziano has to peel the pieces. And Undergun has a problem now as well. It looks like he's stopped cord. Uh, stopped the uh, S1X. Yeah, absolute carnage here. Unlucky, but we, we saw a mistake there from Ponziano. And then Wilfred's gone and pulled his stop cord off his e-scooter, so he's had to figure that out. So big change up here. Is Wilfred Unjugana and he's hunting Elise Christie. So he'll have way more track speed from Elise Christie. There he's up the inside. Oh, and she takes back that position. So great match up here. Using his boost. Can he get ahead? Yeah, looks like he's done that. So fighting back after that silly mistake. Killian Lara, we just saw, was watching on his teammate as he swings towards the checkered flag, and that is a good, accomplished performance. And he needs more than just a check at the shoulder to see who's behind him. So that big moment for her as Guadalho tries to sneak down the inside. No mistakes from Elise Christie, though. As she's going to head towards the line now. They get low, they took, and Christie takes it. Well, let's get a recap then of the final standings from that one. Brooks taking victory, followed in by O'Neill, Unjaguna, who all go through to the semi-finals. Elise Christie, Guadalho, and Ponziani miss out. 
So here with Dan Brooks representing Nico Roach Racing. I feel like you've finally got into the swing of things. Yeah, finally. It's took a little while this weekend to get a bit of a, you know, get used to the track. But this time we now have. It's all about the start as well. That's a big, big chunk of the time in the race. So uh, got a good start and kind of just tried to just lead my own way. And yeah, we crossed the line first. So I'm happy with that one. We're ready. It's time. Quarter final. Oh, there's twitching on the start and they're away. Finally, they're away. And it's going to be tight into this first corner. It looks like it's going to be Vernet who's got the position. Has he? No, he's not. It's brilliant from Nehru to take first place, just chopping across the front. And you can see the nerves at the top of the ramp. Third place is Sarlik. And then coming through, it's Skinner, Bello, and then shoots. Oh, these guys are so fast out on track. But it is so tight here, he needs to be patient. He needs to really decide where he could throw it up the inside, but not waste it too often though, because then you're gonna drift back. So awesome racing here, and, oh. and there's a mistake from Salik. As I said, he needs to be patient. He goes down and that could cost him dearly. <laughs> uh, let's have another look at what happened here. Oh, he just, the back wheel just got bumped on that little bit of a chicane. As you can see here, it sets up, but boom, the back wheel just hits that bit of the chicane. Loses traction, and that's all she wrote for Salik. He was doing so well there. This is the battle for six. Skinner is putting the pressure on the best that he possibly can. Yeah, this is an important piece of the puddle here. Oh, oh and that's how Solix managed to stay in third position. Diving up the inside there, what a huge crash. Wonder if there'll be anything under investigation there. Time will tell with that. That was a big crash there. We're on board with Nehru as he swings in through this final chicane, and then he'll come round. What will he do as he heads down the home straight? Here he is, looking for victory. Oh, yes, of course. The entertainer. He makes you want to watch every moment of his races. So a busy race for race control, a position apiece docked for both Nehru and also Kota shoots. But the big news comes around Salik. He was in third place. He was a judge to beat the cause of a collision. He drops two positions and outside the top three, he's out. And that means Berlo is through. Matisse, what a fantastic race that was for you. I feel like you're really getting into the swing of things. Talk me through it. Well, it was sick. Uh, I had a good start. Like I, I was going to start too early, but I came back and after I started the good time. So I hope I'm not going to get penalties for that. But yeah, it was amazing. Good. It feels like the people have turned out for you today. They were screaming from the sidelines and we saw you giving them a nod mid-race. Yeah, like very thank you to my friends because they were there and they support me so much. So thank you very much. Mate, it's great. I even saw you popping a wheelie over the finish line. It's like you're really starting to put on a show. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's uh, it's part of the part of the e-scooter. So yeah. Yes, all right. Well, I look forward to seeing you moving forward, Matisse. Thank you very much. Espinosa, Jimenez, Cabrini, Morgan, Lara, Latelier, and Luna. And we're underway, and we're clean this time round. Luna's on the inside, but is it going to be Cabrini? It is. Cabrini's got the speed going into the opening turn. Luna with her, and then it's Espinosa, Jimenez, who's off. He's off, and he finds himself having to fight back in this one. Goodness me, it's been a good start to this race, but Cabrini showed great pace. We look at that first corner and you see, oh, that's where he goes off. Espinosa Jimenez had it all in the bag there for a moment and then he got out of shape. Oh, exciting stuff and up the inside for Luna makes it stick as well. Great pass on that main straight. That is one of the few places you can make a pass stick. In 
the practice and some of the heats, but drifting back here. Fought, and there's a mistake from Laura. Oh, that is not good. Wow, big mistake and crash. So that's opened the door here for Morgan. Here they come then, they swing one way, then the other, on the inside he goes, is there any space? No, not this time, as they're going to head towards the line. It's Luna who wins from Cabrini and Espinosa Jimenez. They're heading through, Morgan Letelier and Lara are out. Wow, what a quarter final there, how are you feeling? Uh, I have no words, like literally have no air for words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a uh, really exhausting track and five laps uh, after the weekend is really hard to, man to manage with yeah. and somehow we did it. Yeah. yeah, it's a longer track and we've added more laps in today. But what was really important for you, a crucial moment was that second lap when you overtook Cabrini. Yeah, well, uh, in fact, in this track, it's really hard to overtake, so we knew that the most important point of the race was the start, like in 80% of the race. And we managed to find a way to do it, both in the heats and now in the quarterfinals. We made it. Uh, I tried to overtake Cabrini to stay in a safer spot, and finally we made it. You did it. Your hard work paid off. I'll see you in the semifinals. Mark yeah. Luna. <laughs> Thank you. Here are the final standings then. Luna with the victory, followed by Cabrini and Espinosa Jimenez. Billy Morgan misses out, Latelier in fifth, and then Killian Lara. So, big names not going to make it through to the semis. No matter where it leads, I I I'm in control. Destination guaranteed. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC. Hello and welcome here to Sion. We are live We're in sunny Switzerland. Let's talk about the riders that are going through to the semis. And you had a chance to chat with Chelsea. Yes, yes. So tell me, what did you say? So Chelsea, she has really, really been putting a shift in and she's wanted to be up front and lead. And she's finally managed to get to that. Absolutely fantastic work from her. She's somebody who's been grafting. She didn't have such a good time when we were over at the Printworks in London. But I think here in Sion, she's really proven herself. What about Nikki Daly making all, you know, her way into the semis? Another rider who's just picking up so much more information, race after race. She's doing more and more and her speed is getting up there. And I think her team's very proud of her. The team manager must be really, really happy because Anish Shetty is also in the semi-finals. Well, you see the thing with Anish, right? You have to remember, <laughs> it's hot here in Sion, yeah? But for Anish, he is a man that is super cool. And I said to him, I said, I said, Anish, how are you feeling about the temperature? He said, uh, I'm, to be fair, it's a little bit cooler than it is in India. So he is cool, quite literally, and also cool and calm on the track. But another one who is not to be messed with. Absolutely. I mean, he is incredible. And then what about the quarterfinal two? I mean, Dan Brooks, the young gun, don't underestimate, age is just a number in racing. I think it's a, a <laughs> fight between Wilfred and Dan for the Battle of the Smiles and how serious you are on the track. Dan did a lot of chasing in London, and I think this is a time for him now in Sion for him to really show that he can lead the pack as well. Well, you know what? We have no time to waste because now it's time for semi-final one. So two podiums from London in Shetty and Brooks, but who could be there here in Sion? The riders are ready. They wait. The countdown is on for these guys. Wait, the green light, and we're away in the first of these semi finals. And it's going to be that race down to the first bend. And once again, it's going to be Daly who flies down the straight, and she leads from Shetty. It's a call in one, two. Then Brooks, then Unjaguna, and then it's Gowland. So, lots going on. And this is going to make this race really interesting because Daly has got the quick start, but not the speed through the race. And so we're going to see a really tight bunch pack. Yeah, you can see it. The pack is bunching already and she's looking over her shoulder. She knows she doesn't have the track speed here, but it is so difficult to pass. So you've got to be patient because if you go for a pass too early or in the wrong spot, you can cause carnage here. As they swing round, the boost is used as they go up the hill. Daly only has 69 seconds, but Shetty and Brooks 
are still on three figures. We're on board with Shetty, and he's chasing down his teammate here. And they're very, very close as they go down the back straight. Will this be a chance to get past? No, Daly says. Oh, and down goes Gowland. And that looks like a heavy one. Absolutely full speed for Chelsea Gowland. And a really tough fall. You would think Daily these guys should start using some of their boost, you know, if they've got over three figures in it. This is where you need it. Yes, you need it in the final, but you've got to... Oh, and it's red flag. We've been red flagged. So the riders will all slow down because of the red flag. Safety is absolutely paramount. And that was a hard fall. Great to see Chelsea Gowland up on her feet. And they'll clear her and her debris off the track. Let's have another look at exactly what happened then to Chelsea Gowland. Well, you see the Carlins just getting together and then behind them. And uh, Gowland goes down. And it is really a testament to the safety. Look at that. And it's so Big important. Big crash there at full speed as well. I mean, she just came over and just didn't notice Wilfred right next to her. Almost self-inflicted. You never want to see a crash. Chelsea heads off the racing track and back towards the paddock. She will not take part in the restart of this race. So they prepare themselves for take two of this first semi-final. Four laps they will complete to finish off this race. The red light's on. And we're away here in Sion. And what a race this is. And once again, it is the Carlin Bell. Oh, big slide, and he's off. It's Brooks this time. O'Neill has to slow down too. Oh, my word. He just got all out of shape. And everything went wrong for Dan Brooks. And one of the favourites hits the deck. He's well, that is unfortunate. He's, okay. he's up, but he's off the track. But Nikki Daly, as if it didn't happen, she comes out firing in the second restart here, leading us out here from Shetty. But unfortunately, Dan Brooks is out. We will not see him in the final, so no chance of another podium for him. On board here with Shetty. Closing in on his teammate, but it is been so good from Daly so far. And if she can stay wheel perfect here, she's in a great position to make it through to the final. Shetty has a look as they move through. Oh, tense and moment here. This is where Shetty has to be patient, though, because, yes, you want some points for the championship, but this is where accidents can happen. Daly may be a little bit slower than Shetty, but if Shetty jumps up the inside and Daly isn't aware and they have a crash, it's going to be tears for both of them. Will there be team orders from Carlin Racing? I wonder. Remember, there is a Constructors' Championship as well. Team points are on offer here as they swing round now. And all of a sudden, Shetty will consider his options here. They're on the boost. The Carlin team are watching on. And now hearts will be in their mouths as the riders will come back into view momentarily as they swing down the final straight. They move through into the third lap here, and Shetty's up the inside, but again, Daly says no. Oh, they touch, yeah. they touch, it was close. Yeah, so close. I just think Daly needs to be aware that Shetty's there with the track position. This is so dangerous for the team Carlin here. Oh, he's made the pass stick from what I can see. So Wilfred back in third, but it looks like Shetty has made the pass stick and Nikki Daly has not gone down, but there were some tense moments there. And O'Neill's putting the pressure on behind as well. Shetty's out in front, but there's a real battle going on just behind. And Jaguna is under pressure. Daly is under pressure. And Jake 100 is dipping. He's trying to get his way there. And the fans well, this are could be exciting. To their home. This is so exciting because if anything goes wrong with Daly, there he is, Wilfred, trying to get past Daly. But if those two had to collide, that means Jake is. Oh, there we go. Look at the pass up the inside from Wilfred, making it stick. 
They're on the last lap. It's now or never for these riders as Jake O'Neill is pushing his way through, but Daly says, no, not this time. The battle for third, the battle for the final is right here, right now. And they are working so hard. Shetty's off in the lead, and Junguna is there. And now Jake O'Neill, can he get past Daly, I wonder? Tense moments here on the final lap. He's got to throw everything at this. Daly is holding him up. What can O'Neill do, though? It is so tight. He went up for a pass, but in the wrong place, so he lost a bit of time. Here they go, Last then, lap as they head here. back in towards the final end, and Shetty's going to come through. Unjun Gunnar's going to make the final, and then it's going to be Daly. Carlin finished first and third. What a race that was from Nikki Daly. She did a win, but an incredible, incredible performance from her. Brooks went down early. He's OK. It ruled him out, and it left Shetty to claim victory. Wow. Patience from Shetty. It paid off. There were some tense moments there when he was bar to bar with his teammate Daly, but great run by him. But yes, as you said, Daly was able to get the whole shot twice because there was a restart. Incredible under pressure there and a big race for Daly making it through to the final. Let's look back at another dramatic semi-final. Another dramatic race here. And Daly did everything she needed to us. Big wobble. What went wrong here for Brooks? Yeah, it's, it's tough to see. It didn't look like there was much contact. He just kind of was committed over the front. Got a little bit of a speed wobble, and that was that was it for him. He was out on that first lap of the restart. Well, Daly led the way. She was under a lot of pressure all the way through. But held her nerve brilliantly here. Yeah, closing the door on Shetty a few times when I'm sure Shetty was hoping that you would realize, hey, I'm going to have to come past you or we're going to have a crash. Yeah, diving up the inside, but Daly closing the door. Almost touching. Oh, that was close right there. And then he was able to make the pass stick. Well, the battle was on and the battle was real. Wilfred and Jaguna nicked his way through. O'Neill thought there was a chance, but the answer was no. And Shetty takes the checkered flag. And Jaguna through to the final. Daly as well. Shetty with victory in 3.53. And Jaguna, Daly all through to the final. We say goodbye to O'Neill, Brooks and Gowland. Right, let's get back down trackside and let's get some instant reaction to that semi-final. Anishetti Here is trackside with Anishetti. You must be feeling great because it was a big win for your team, but also a big win for yourself. We've been talking about smooth Shetty. Is he back? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, that's always there. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy that uh, Nikki made it to the finals. Uh, she's been putting a lot of effort. So I'm super happy for that. We just wanted to stay as a team in the first second, but then uh, there a lot of guys attacking me, so I had to make a move on uh, Nikki. And she was uh, uh, <laughs> easily, she happily gave away the place as well. Uh, so happy for Team Scarlin. Yeah, I mean, it did look quite aggressive from our point on the track. We weren't sure whether that was strategy or not, but straight after the race, we saw you embrace, and yeah. everything's good on Team Carlin, right? Yes. Uh, and I would also thank my engineers. They've been doing a wonderful uh, job. Uh, throughout making our scooters run perfectly. And uh, okay. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the second semi-final. And we have Vernet, Nehru, Bello, Luna, the speedy Cabrini, and Espinosa Jimenez. Uh, we can cut this any way you want, whether it's the, the style and flair of Nehru or whether it's the speed of Cabrini or whether it's Luna who's been ruthless, or Jimenez who's shown an awful lot throughout all of this. So the second semi-final, the nerves will be jangling here. Three places up for grabs. Vene nearly jumps that one. Nehru this time has missed the start altogether, and once again it's Cabrini and Luna that are gonna lead this one out. And Sara Cabrini Hits the first corner first, followed by Luna, then Vernet, then Berlo. And if he's going to do it again, 
you got to say, Nehru has got to put in some performance here. Yeah, Nehru, I thought, was doing so well up until now, just withstanding the pressure of racing in front of this home country here. But he's got his work cut out for him. Look at them bunching up. It is so tight. Man, this is going to be frustrating because we know how much track speed he has and how much... The first winner of the first race in London is so deep and buried in the pack here. Well, let's see how they go from here. We're looking and seeing just what space there is to work on. Oh, a little mistake there from Espinosa Jimenez. And here is Cabrini who leads at the end of the first lap, followed by Luna. And it's Vinay in third. And then the pass up the inside. He's now starting to make the move. As he does slide through there, Nehru. He's got himself one place. But he needs more than that if he's to qualify for the final. Well, that is great. That is just what he needed. Now he can see there are places he can pass. He needs to keep it smooth. There's a mistake from Vinay. That's going to help. Look, he's closed the gap already. On so Nehru right knows what Nehru. he has to do. He has to get past Vinay here to make it into the final. This is going to be tense racing. Look how close he is. And having to use more boost than maybe he'd want. Only 60 seconds remaining. He's having a look one way, then the other. As he glides yeah, around nothing, the corner. Nothing he can do about that. He cannot worry about conserving boost. He needs to get past Vinay. Wow, closes the door on him. Vinay does. Wow, and there's Luna some action the at lead. the front. We're on to the third lap. Luna leads from Cabrini. Now there's a chance for Vinay to put pressure on Cabrini. And Nehru is putting pressure on Vinay. Still in it is Espinosa Jimenez. Any mistake could cost any of these riders dear with a couple of laps to go. Everyone is still in it because, as you said, if there's any mistake, if one rider touches another one and they go down, it is open door policy here. But now they're bunching up, which is going to really play into Nehru's favor. He needs to get on the back of Rene and use that boost. Wow, it is close Nehru. racing here. Nehru's going to have a look down the back straight here. He's looking to see what he can do. We're on board with him. It's a space down the inside. No, not this time. Vinay slams the door, firmly shut. And those four now are just a little bit clear. And the pressure is starting to mount here on Nehru. The chances yeah, the pressure are is definitely mounting. Too. Mounting, mounting the pressure. But he do, does need to force a mistake from someone like Vinay. That might be the only way through, is just keep on the back wheel. Keep throwing the nose up the inside. Make him aware that you are there and that you want to come past. And that, hey, if Renee wants to win this, he better keep it clean. And when I say win, stay in that third position. Nehru only has 13 seconds of boost left. He's, he's running it out. He's giving it all here. Luna's tracking at 53-7. And now it's a space to work on this final lap. Looking to try and get the move down the inside. No, not this time. Nehru runs wide. Oh, was that his opportunity blown here? Because now there's a gap. And he has yeah, no that's boost. that's the problem. He's got no boost. That is the problem when you dive bomb someone on the inside and you cannot make it stick. He's lost so much momentum. Look at the gap that Benet has over him. Luna in oh. charge in front from Cabrini. And now Nehru's made another mistake, and Espinosa Jimenez has passed him. It's all over for the Swiss. The dreams of home track victory are gone this time around. But Luna eclipsing the star that is Nehru. Cabrini with another solid performance as Luna's through to the final. He takes the checkered flag. He'll be joined by Cabrini and Vinay. And then Espinosa Jimenez. So no Swiss delight in Sion. But what a fantastic race that was. Incredible scenes here. Wow. Disappointing. I was just thinking that he hadn't cracked under the pressure. It is so tough to perform when you're at home. Wow. But Luna, let's not take anything away. That was an incredible race. Got the pass done and took it all the way to the finish. 
Well, Luna has quietly gone about his business very well, and he just put in a 52-7. That is rapid. Wow, it is going to be an exciting final. Look at that. Luna through to the final. Cabrini through to the final. And rounding it out with Vinay, able to keep Nehruda away. Man, that was some pressure cooker of a race. An upset of sorts. A wheelie, though. Of course, a wheelie, front and back. From one of the most flamboyant races on the circuit. But the lineup is confirmed, and Luna will beat it. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from this second semi final then. And a lot was to do with the start, and it was Cabrini who once again hit that first corner at the front of the pack. Big start from Cabrini, we've seen it all day. Luna in hot pursuit in second. Vinay rounding it out in third. Man, it was tight racing here in semi-final number two. Do you think that when you look at Nehru, did, did the fact that he jumped the start in the in the quarter final, do you think that that played on his mind at all? Yeah, I think you're going to be a little bit more hesitant subconsciously. You don't want to be doctor position here in the semi-final. His technique, he was just a little bit late on the start, didn't get the drive, but I mean, someone like Cabrini just outshone him there on the start. And the front, Luna with a nice pass to get around Cabrini, and he held it really well here to maintain his position. And as Cabrini came under some pressure, she repelled all of that. Vinay too, until eventually there was a mistake. And this moment, where he just runs a little bit wide, ends up costing dear. And it gave the time and space, just there, gave the time and space for Vene to take third place, a nod of a head, a victory. Cabrini through. And a jump of delight from the Murphy Scooters team. So let's get the results confirmed then. It is Luna with victory, fast time as well, 52.7. He'll be joined in the final by Cabrini and Vernet, Espinosa, Jimenez and Nehru. And below are all out. Right, let's go downstairs and get some more reaction with Marcus. Here, trackside with Mark Luna, you must be feeling ecstatic. That was a very exciting race. And I mean, you're up there with some of the best of them and you've managed to come out in the first position. How are you feeling? Again, nowhere. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm feeling really, really well. More or less, the, the race was like the semi-final. Cabrini is really, really lightweight and he flies in the start. And somehow he managed to get uh, after her and well, now he, she's breaking uh, later and I had to break even more late. So yeah, that was a, a really good fight and I had a lot of pressure from the riders behind. Mate, it's fantastic work right out there. You must feel like now you can chase and also lead. What is the plan moving forward? Yeah, I'm going for the win, of course. Uh, the plan uh, at the semi-final, at the quarter-final, uh, is having a good start and staying there and keep pushing. Uh, we had a mess in London and now we are here to correct it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, very you. firm words there from Mark Luna. But I'm here with Matisse Naru. Now, you burnt all of your boost there, so you definitely put in real hard work to try and get back because you had quite a hard start to the race, didn't you, Matisse? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, as you can see at the second, like the one I did before, I failed the start. So, yeah, I tried to, to don't break there. Yeah, I failed the start again in the other way that I was this is the last, so like one of the last. It was hard to get up uh, to Amar because he was blocking that so well. As you can see, it's so narrow. You can't go past, you can't, uh, you can't do much on this race. Uh, it's like this, it's the straight, it's the it's Sion. It's, a, it's still a nice event, I love it. And maybe next time, I don't know. Exactly, and this is not the end of the story for you, is it? We have more events, Italy's coming up. What are your thoughts moving forward? Well, nothing, uh, I, don't, I won't change uh, my mind. It's still uh, so much pleasure to be here and participate with ESC. Okay. And listen, do you want to have some words for the people of Switzerland that come out to see you today here in Sion? I mean, you can do that in your mother tongue, in English, however you feel. I think it's only right. Eh ben, merci beaucoup d'être venu. Ça fait vraiment chaud au cœur. Euh, je m'attendais pas qu'il y ait autant de monde et puis autant de support. Du coup, euh, merci à vous tous. Ça fait plaisir. Merci. 
Thank you very much from the bottom of his heart to all the people of Sion. That's what he said. He'll be watching on as they will be, though, at this guy who will be in the final. And that is on the way. No matter where it leads, I I I'm in control. Destination guaranteed. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC. Back here in sunny, lovely Sion, and that was all for semi-final two. And one of the riders that made it through was the French racing citizens rider, Amart Vernet, and we had the chance to catch up with him ahead of the final. Bonjour, je m'appelle Aymar Vernet, et j'ai commencé le sport dans le vélo quand j'avais 10 ans. Puis après, euh, je me suis rapproché des skateparks, j'ai fait beaucoup de freestyle scooter. Puis après, euh, j'ai décidé de passer à la trottinette électrique, là où j'ai décroché mon premier sponsor. Et maintenant, depuis un an, je suis avec ESC pour faire le World Championship. Let's go ESC, c'est des trottinettes électriques où il y a de la bataille. Et ça vaut le détour parce qu'on ne sait jamais ce qui peut se passer, qui va passer devant et ça va vite et il faut être prêt. Ça fait toujours plaisir de faire partie d'un sport qui est pour l'environnement, qui va dans ce sens-là parce qu'on ne peut pas toujours faire le geste pour, pour la planète. Et on va continuer dans ce sens-là, puisque apparemment, on est bien parti pour électrifier le monde du racing maintenant. Mes études de mécanique font qu'aujourd'hui, je peux bricoler moi-même mes trottinettes et avoir un avis sur la mécanique de mes mécanos et l'entretien qu'ils font sur ma trottinette, car je peux ajuster les pièces et tout ça très bien. <rire> on va s'amuser, faire le job, et je pense que c'est comme ça qu'on va gagner, en mettant la pression de côté. It's always great to hear from the riders and to get to know them a little better. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. You know, it's not far from now; it's just a few minutes away. So it's now back to Seth and Needles in the commentary. Who are you feeling is the favourite going in? Yeah, I think coming off that win, Mark Luna is looking good. I think that's going to help the confidence. His starts have been pretty decent as well. We know Shetty is smooth, cool, calm, calculated. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. And that's probably what you're going to need. But for all-out speed, uh, I like the, the fact that Luna's there. But then your favourite, I'm going to just say it for you is probably Cabrini because of how well that start goes. Well, let's go back down trackside and let's look ahead towards the final. There's Nikki Daly with those Olympic rings on her helmet. She's in her first final here at the ESC. Let's find out a little bit more about her. My name is Nikki Daly. I'm a 2020 Olympian, 2018 World Cup silver medalist with the Irish women's hockey team. And I've had a passion for motorsport since I was born. My dad was a racing driver. I spent every weekend watching him compete. And my uncle, Derek Daly, was also a Formula One driver and IndyCar driver. Just seeing the competitive element of it, coming from a small country like Ireland um, and making it all the way to the world stage really inspired me. I was always very sporty when I was younger and hockey was the one that sort of really challenged me the most and I felt this is the one I want to really pursue and, and see just how far I could get. And getting to the Olympics was the end goal for me and it was the first time we'd ever had an Irish women's hockey team qualify for an Olympic Games. So it was uh, really special to be part of that. I want to focus on physical training, learning more about the scooter, racing as a sport and the different techniques, how I ride the scooter, like that's going to be a focus for me is how, how well I can adapt and how quickly I can progress. I think that'll be a focus for me. So Nikki Daly preparing herself for her first final in the SC. She's actually somebody I've commentated on in two different sports. I commentated on her in 2020 at the Olympic Games. So there you go, L a little bit more information on Nikki Daly. But what about the rest of this final lineup? Let's see 
who she has for company on the start gate. And this Shetty, who we just heard from, Wilfred Undraguna, who's out there, and he's representing 258 Racing. We've got Nikki Daly, Mark Luna, who is undefeated in his races today, the super quick Sara Cabrini from Helbis, and then Amar Vernet, tall, angular, and in the orange of Racing Citizens. Yeah, we've got horses to bikes. We've got hockey to e-scooters. We've got BMX to e-scooters. I mean, the list goes on. CrossFit. What an awesome mix of superstar athletes we have in the final. And this is where fitness actually may come into it because it's been a long weekend and this is a longer track. Uh, and with all the twists and turns, there's a lot more on the legs, isn't there? Yeah, and on top of that, uh, the fitter you are, the more energy you have mentally. And this is where it's going to pay off, is how much can you concentrate? It's more laps as well than they've done all day. It's six laps here in the final. That's Sara Cabrini. Cabrini, again, has a lot of racing steel. And she's been so fast off the start. Where's it going to be won this then for you, Needles? Yeah, the start is critical. We've seen it all day. It's all up to the start. But after that, I think a little bit of patience because if you're going to go for a pass, you've got to make sure it's the correct place and you can pull it off. Because if you make a mistake trying to go pass, that's the end of your race. Well, we're into the final countdown ahead of this final. Six laps of this course here in Sion. 18 turns, 639 meters. Somewhere between 52 to 55 seconds a lap you can expect. And one of these racers is going to win their first ever round of the ESC. The red light is on, we're ready to go. This is the final here in Sion, and we're underway as they dug down deep. Luna and Cabrini, and is it going to be Daly? Three of them all close. Cabrini's going to take it in. Luna, and then Vinay makes his way through as well. What a first straight it was, but it is Cabrini who leads as things go through here into the little chicanes and a little problem for Daly there, who has to give some track away. And the first three are making a little gap here. As you called it, Cabrini has incredible starts, but Luna, the danger man, is in second and hot on her heels. But let's not count out Vinay there in third position. Cabrini leads then here from Luna, then it's Vernet, and then it's Shetty, who is right over the top of his handlebars, trying to find his way back into this race after just being left on the start line as they complete his first lap. Luna bursts around the outside. But goodness me, Cabrini will hang on, and she is very, very low on boost, just something to be aware of. We're on board with Shetty right now as he picks his way through. That's a key factor you bring into the mix here, the boost because there are some undulations. There's off camber turns, but there's also a little uphill near the uh, start finish, making their way when they finish the lap. So Cabrini leads it out here, but wow, Luna, what can he do? I know he's got some track speed, but where can he try and make a pass? It is so tight out there. Luna undefeated so far on the day. Three races, three wins for him so far. A check from Cabrini. She knows she's under pressure as Shetty comes on the inside. Oh, he's down! He's down! In the final, Shetty makes contact. And is that his hopes and dreams over as Luna now tries to get on the outside? He looks up the inside. Can he break latest? Not this time. Wow. It is all kicking off here in the finals. Luna trying to go make a pass. Shit, he wasn't patient enough. He falls off, so it's done for him. But it's all up to Luna. That is one key section. You can try and make a pass, but it's so tough to make it to Cabrini finding track speed here in the finals. But running out of boost. Let's have another look at this. What do you see, Needles? No, there was no space. He's just diving up the inside. There was no space. For Ney, we know, was going to lean over. I mean, just a silly maneuver by Shetty at the end of the day. So, finally, the Iceman melts just a little here in Sion. 
as they come round to the midway point of this race. And it's still Cabrini who leads this one. She's hanging on, she's under pressure from Luna. Behind him is Vernet. Unjaguna is in fourth, then it's Shetty, then it's Daly. The Carlins are at the back, but we're here at the front and we know that these three, barring a mistake, will be on the podium. The question needles, though, will be in what order? We have a yellow flag right now, and Unjaguna goes down. Oh, no! Another mistake at the front as well. Luna is down, and Vernet is up to second. Huge mistake from Luna. Just loses the front end there on that chicane. I was going to say the top three are in a class of their own. Big mistake from Luna. This pays so well for Cabrini. Flawless race up until now. Leading it out here after four laps. Four laps of the six now completed and Cabrini has a commanding lead. On this fifth lap, what can she make happen? Vinay is in second place. We don't see him in shot yet. Then it's Luna who's under pressure from the very, very quick Shetty who just put in a 53.9. So Luna throwing it away in second position there. So unfortunate. Oh, and another crash there, losing the back end. But there's the crash. Just too aggressive, too hot into that left-hander. Push the front. Luna out of it, all but handing now, it to Cabrini. Well, a different pressure now, isn't it, for Cabrini? The pressure of knowing that victory is hers. She just needs to get round without making a mistake. We're on board with an Ischetti here. Sliding round as Cabrini starts her final lap. Will she be a winner here in Sion? That's the question. She's looking good for it right now. There's only the second ever event in the series. Cabrini can go on to take it. She's on her final lap. Flawless race from her. Cabrini negotiates her way through. She checks behind. There's nothing there. She doesn't need to worry. She's got almost a five-second lead over Vanay, who's in second. And it's not quite no a focus victory lap. On the it, well, I mean, it all but is, but she's got to focus on going forward. Don't look back. Just ride your race. You've been doing so well until now. Awesome start it, from her. She's led from start to finish. Here she comes over the line. It's history for Cabrini and the Helbiz team. Victory in Sion for Sara Cabrini. She led from ramp to checker flag. And look at it. Look at what it means! The ESC is alive, it's jumping, and it's in Switzerland. And Team Helbys are enjoying the success of Sara Cabrini. Outstanding on the streets of Sion. You can see what it means to her and the team. Incredible scenes here in Sion, in Switzerland. Led that race from start to finish. What a deserved winner of this ESC race. Wow. Incredible. And a sport which draws no thoughts or conclusions or differential on gender. And in race two, Cabrini wins. And that is a milestone moment in this fledgling sport for a super, superstar. And here is the victory lap, well deserved. Been so good off the starting blocks and on this race with it being so tight in these narrow streets of Sion, it paid off. But to withstand the pressure from Luna, Vinay, I mean, that is really good for her going into the rest of the series and especially the next round in Italy. Big points on offer as well for Sara Cabrini. She wants to hear the crowd. Absolutely. And look at the reaction she's going to get here at the reception. Jordan ran first over. The Helbys team are loving it. Absolute delight. 
Yeah, I mean, as fun as the sport is, as, yeah, as new as the sport is, we are racing. And what do you want to do when you race? You want to stand on the top step of that podium. Incredible scenes here in Sion. It is brilliant for Sara Carini. And you sense that everybody is so excited for the way that she's been able to race this weekend. Uh, also, though, we've got to mention Vinay. Amar Vinay, who finished in second. And Luna, who got off the deck to finish in third place. But she's the headline grabber. Sara Cabrini. There's Luna giving her a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the official uh, call then on this one. Confirmation then that Sara Cabrini is the victor here. And she has impressed all weekend. Vernet in second, Luna in third, Shetty who came off after pushing too hard in fifth, Unjaguna, and then Nikki Daly in sixth place in her first final. Deserved victory? Absolutely, I mean so deservedly. She led from start to finish. There was so much pressure on her to be at the front there with someone like Luna who was undefeated coming into the final. I mean, that is just incredible scenes. Well done to Cabrini. That is so well deserved. That'll be huge for the confidence leading into the rest of the series. Avevo finito il boost al secondo giro, non sapevo più come fare. Ma ce l'ho fatta, sentivo gli altri che si uccidevano dietro. Io ho detto sì, dai, 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 forse ce la faccio. Grazie a tutto il team Elbitz, veramente. È stato un weekend difficile, ma ce l'abbiamo fatta. She, she feels incredible. She did not expect his this result. She says that she finished up her boost on the second lap. And she says that she could hear that everyone was crushing behind her and that it was mayhem. But she kept her cool. She did not expect this. She had quite a hard weekend because nothing was easy. So, I mean, where do you go from here? Okay. Dopo questo cosa si fa? Spero di vincere ancora perché è bellissima! After this, the only thing left to do is to keep winning because it's great. Thank you, Sara. Congratulations. Hey, Mark, congratulations. How do you feel? Bah, je me sens bien. Deux places, uh, c'est deuxième place, c'est plutôt pas mal pour une uh, deuxième course. À Londres, j'ai déjà fait une finale. Du coup, je crois que je suis leader du championnat pour l'instant. Au niveau des points, je suis pas sûr. Félicitations. <laughs> Merci. Amart is saying that it's not bad to be on second place here after what happened in London, and he believes that currently in the standings he should be leading the championship. So he's pretty happy, even though apparently Amart no. So no, oh, désolé. So la last time. But not yeah, to next worry. Time, next time. <laughs> next time. Next time. <laughs> Merci. Thank you so much, Amart. Thank you. Now let's speak to Mark Luna. Mark, what a fight. How, how do you feel right now? Uh, I don't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, we, we, we knew that we would struggle with Sarah. We've been with her on quarterfinals and semifinals, and the strategy was the same all the time. She started first, me second, and then overtake on the first corner. After three races, she learned the spot, and for me, it was really, really hard to overtake her because, yeah, you know, the way different is is hike. We have to work on it personally, <laughs> and yeah, I really enjoyed. I had I suffered on the last two laps because I saw I need behind. I, I was a little bit out of the race because of the crash, but yeah, we managed to to have a good boost for the last lap and defend from Anish. So, what's the strategy to overtake Sarah next time around? Yeah, yeah, the study was to retake Sarah. Was that the question? Sorry, I didn't hear you. That's all right. Okay. Thank you so, so much, Mark. Yes. We'll let you go to the podium. Wow, well done to Vanessa there. Three interviews, three languages. It was like a Roger Federer press conference. Very, very impressive. Thank you to 
the riders as well for giving up their time straight away as soon as they're off. They're emotional and excited. And it's great to hear exactly what they felt. Amar Vene. And in the early evening, Swiss sunlight. Listen to this. What a reception for Sara Cabrini. He'll enjoy that. And listen to this. High fives all round. There she is. The champion here in Sion, Sara Cabrini. Her first ESC race victory in just the second round. Elvis is on the board. And let the fizz flow as the celebrations are well underway here. A well-deserved drink, Needles. Absolutely, that's the best part of the weekend, no doubt. Coming back onto the star trap, just probably with a lot of relief, no pressure, not having to think about anything, but how awesome the week was for all these riders. Oh, an image I don't that's think champagne has ever tasted that good. Absolutely. It's a great image and a, a great look of the ESC, the picture that's on the screen with Cabrini, Luna, and Vernet. An inclusive series, an inclusive sport. And it's all about what they're able to achieve. Her name's been chanted as she's thoroughly enjoying the moment, and quite rightly so. She's not got enough hands, though. That's the problem here, Needles. You need somebody to carry some of your gear. She's not, not going home without the champers, that's for sure. <laughs> and why would you after such an incredible race? Winner of well, the let's look back second at some of the round here in Sion. Talk us through it, Needles. What did you see? Well, I mean, I saw what I saw all day. That was when Cabrini lined up. She just hole-shotted, was nowhere to be seen. So fast out the gate. Luna was on her heels, going for that pass, as he said. But look at that. Cabrini just shutting the door on him. And then she was in not quite cruise control, but she had a little boost. It was all gone by the second lap. Nobody was able to take advantage of that. And maybe, mainly, but that was because of mistakes like this, where Luna pushed too hard. Yeah, pushed way too hard there. Just knew that he had to make something happen. His normal passing spot was just blocked by Cabrini, forcing a mistake there in that off-camber turn. But Cabrini was flawless. Rode with composure, rode with guts and aggression. Awesome win for her. She rode with some passion too. And we saw that in the celebrations at the end. A character. And you talk about moments of history, but you talk about magical moments as well. And this was one of each. And one that the fans here will remember for quite some time in Sion. I love the fact that Vernet is delighted as well. And she's heading home to Italy for the next round, of course. And that will certainly help keep the fans there interested in what's going on, as the next new crowd will get to see ESC in the flesh. That'll be special for her, going home as a race winner as well. Will shoot up her confidence, but as well as her expectations, and the pressure will be on her shoulders. Ah, Cabrini getting much love as she uh, heads back down. Uh, it's been a really, really wonderful, wonderful weekend of racing here in Switzerland. I think it tells you this. Anishetti 
leads the way on 52 points. Vernet on 47, then it's Nehru, Brooks and Cabrini tied on 43 with Luna in sixth place. As we head down through the top 10, uh, Lara and Draguna is there, shoots, and Danny Skinner, both that missed out in the latter stages here in Sion. So Shetty sits atop of the pile, and you sense that he may be that rider that just nags away throughout the whole of this championship with consistently good performances. But never mind him. The story this time round is about the brilliant performance of Sara Cabrini. Sion champion. The top of the podium, the top of the pile. Well, let's see what that does to the overall team standings then. Carlin are top of the pile, largely thanks to Daly and Shetty in the final. Then it's Nico Roche Racing, followed by Murphy Scooters. Player one, Racing Citizens, and then 27X by Nico Hulkenberg round out the top six. So it's tight at the top of the team standings. Let's head back down trackside to Vanessa and Marcus. I mean, I have a bit of an adrenaline high, I have to admit. It's going to take a minute for me to cool down after the excitement of that final. I mean, it's fantastic. We're live in Sion. It has been a fantastic second event for ESC. Oh, my god! And the first woman to win an event. That's, yes. that's huge. It's absolutely amazing and well-deserved as well. She's been fighting and pushing throughout the race. And I mean, she was somebody who was hot off the blocks and led all the, all the way throughout, didn't she? It was incredible. And, you know, we're leading now. The next uh, event is going to be in Italy. So we have an Italian winner here in Switzerland. Who knows what's going to happen next? Isn't it interesting? We had Matisse Nauru, the winner in London, heading into Switzerland. Now we have Cabrini heading to Italy. Wow. Who knows what's going to happen? So... I mean, the three that didn't make it to the podium, Shetty, Laguna and Daly. I think all three of them are going to be really feeling the emotions, the ups and downs. It's been a really big weekend and it's fair to say that they've all had wins, including uh, if, if, if we go back to Vinay as well. I mean, he had some emotions as well, right? I mean, in the interview, he said, you know, he seemed too cool, calm and collected. He was like, yeah, two is not bad. Man, you're on the podium. You're <laughs> the top three of the events. And he was actually hoping to be leading the championship, which now we know that he isn't, unfortunately, but he is extremely competitive. I think that just goes to show the competitive nature of these riders, right? If they're not on the top spot, if they're not on the top of the podium, they want to do better. And what about Nikki Daly? I mean, she's shown that she's cool, calm and collected after a red flag, you know, and semis. She managed to lead again and now made it to the final. Unfortunately, she's not top three, but she is really showing that evolution. I tell you what, it's something about that Carlin team. Maybe they're kind of gelling and bonding and they're absorbing some of Shetty's cool, calm collectiveness because as a team, it's fair to say that we're seeing massive progression and growth in the way that they're riding. And consistency, which is key. Yes, 100%. And I think the more that we see our teams work together and gel, the more they're going to learn from each other, whether it's track etiquette, whether it's how to hit corners, or whether it's how they're going to have strategies when it comes to things like boost as well. And the, the other thing is that, you know, what a contrast between the layout in London and the layout here in Sion. Completely different racetracks. Exactly. It's been a totally different track. It's been tighter in places. There's been blind corners. It's fair to say it's been an absolute flip of the coin when we've moved over here as well. I mean, we've spoken to Shetty a few times about that track as well, haven't we? And he is currently leading the championship, right? Yes. Shetty is the one. Yes. Shetty, <laughs> even though he's not been on the podium today, he deserves a big pat on the back. And I think you've nicknamed him officially. Yes, he is officially the smooth Shetty. <laughs> That's what he is. I mean, you've seen our interviews with him. He lives in India, right? And he said the temperature here didn't even get under his skin. He's been literally cool and he's been very cool when he's on the track as well. It's been warm and with those leathers, let me tell you, it's even warmer. He's done incredibly. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to have some bubbly in there, aren't they? What but about Wilfred? Let's talk oh, about Wilfred. So, so Jagana, Wilfred, he's had a real roller coaster of a weekend. He's learned loads. He's come from a position where he was thinking that he needed to improve and, and maybe he had potential for quarters and semis. And he's actually pushed himself far enough that he's actually got into the finals as well. And we were talking about whether he was aggressive enough nice or whether he was all yeah. smiles or too nice, but he's proven that when he gets on the track, he has what it takes to get to the final. Keep an eye on Jagana. 
Well, that has been all, you know, from us here in Switzerland. So join us next time in Italy. When I'm in the race, there's no place I'd rather be. I just need to go, don't matter where it leads. I I I'm in control, destination guaranteed. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC. This is the ESC. When I'm in the race, there's no place I'd rather be. I just need to go, don't matter where it leads. I I I'm in control, destination guaranteed. They tell me take it slow, but this is the ESC.